holidays to everybody out there. I know it's uh, about five days till Christmas and, and holiday celebration, so I uh, hope everybody has a great one there. It's time to spend it with the family. Uh, appreciate you guys coming. Um, obviously, you get a chance to celebrate our 2024 class. Uh, you know, we're excited about the class we uh, brought in. We've got 19 signees. Uh, before I get started, you know, as always, I want to thank a bunch of people. You know, you can go all over the place and thank the first one. To thank is is obviously our recruits and their families. Um, you know they've hosted our coaches. Um, some of them are like you're coming back next week. Um, I mean we're in there every week that we can get on the road, uh, getting one contact a week. Uh, myself, I'm only allowed in the home one time. And, and these families, um, you know the recruits, the prospects, the signees, uh, the pit players. Now I guess I can call them. Um, you know just always make it feel at home. Um, the meals they cook uh, had some incredible meals on the road. You know. With the families and to be able to break bread with families is, is the best. I want to thank our coaching staff. They're worn out. Um, I'm actually sending them home at 1:30 today. I said, since that press conference, already get out of here. Um, you know, uh, the stressfulness of, uh, of the, the season we went in. I mean, again, we came off the season. We stayed here for four days, and they were gone. And we actually went, you know, straight through the weekend. We usually we come home for a recruiting weekend, but um, we went straight through the weekend. I think some of the coaches were looking at me like, "We're doing what?" If we can't come over and see our family, it's like, go. You know, you know, we, we had no time, um, short time. Uh, but again, families, the children, you know, obviously the wives, and the coaches did an unbelievable job on the road recruiting, so I thank them. Um, all the high school coaches, you know, administrators, assistant coaches, all those guys, I think everybody forgets what happens to those guys uh, on these visits because they're taken away from their job, uh, their family sometimes in the afternoon, late evenings. Some of the coaches will come visit with you, you know, in the evenings as well, but thank you know the coaches and administrators that you know take care of our coaches. They walk in there. You know it's amazing when you walk into a high school in Pennsylvania, and the security ladies, you know, the security lady is hugging your assistant coach. They've seen so much. That's a good thing. And you know you build relationships. You know with security people, and you walk in there and like you're like, wow, this is great. They love us. You know, and that's Pitt. That's who we are. So I thank all those people uh, because it ends, and it's gonna. You know, I don't want to say get worse for them, but in January. New rule wise, when you think about the, think about these coaches and thanking them, our coaches are now allowed to sit down with the 25 class in January. We used to not be able to do it until next December. Okay, so what we did in December is now going to happen in January. So the, the recruiting process, as coaches, we'd like it to slow down. The NCAA has sped it up, and now uh, these poor kids are going to be out of class. Coaches are going to continue to pull them out of class to see more coaches, and it's going to be chaos in January. So it'll be interesting to see how that. Um, how that goes, but I thank all the coaches, administrators, obviously people on our campus, you know, the life skills, you know, Heather Like and uh, Mike Barabaugh and academics, all the support people that um, that help us. When the kids come on campus, we have a breakfast at the porch. The porch does an unbelievable job. You know, probably should thank all the restaurants in town um, that uh, that take care of us and cater to, you know, our needs and, and what Graham, you know, thank our recruiting officer, Graham, Graham, give him a little wave back there. Graham and Adam, I don't know if Adam's in here, he's probably working on the 25 areas. Adam over there, I figured they'd be in there. But those guys, you know, they're running the show from home, and it's not easy. And I think there's you know, a lot of places around the country that have maybe 25 guys and they're doing it. But, you know, these two guys run it. You know, it's not by themselves, but uh, we thank them as well. So um, so let's get to the signees, just kind of give you a breakdown of what we've got in. Um, we've got eight on offense, five linemen, a receiver, a quarterback, and a running back. Um, still probably, I know Pete's going to ask me, are you done yet? We're not done yet. Uh, we've got 11 signees on defense, uh, five D linemen, three linebackers, two corners, and a safety. Um, and again, when you look at it overall, you know, we talk about the, the, the big guys. You know, we got 10 big guys, and it starts up front uh, with you know five offense linemen, five defense linemen. Those guys take the most development, so it's a you know we lost some guys uh, at those spots, and so there'll be a lot of development there. Something I'm awful proud of is we got seven of them from the state of Pennsylvania. And again, we talk about our backyard. I think when I sat here in 2015, and said how we're gonna recruit is our backyard. So uh, with that seven of them are from PA, um, we got eight other states that are included in there. And we also have one, we've had one from Italy, we've got one from Germany now, uh, Moritz, which we'll talk about in a second, but um, special. So we got seven from PA, four from Florida, two from our neighbor in Ohio, one from Georgia, one from Massachusetts, one from Maryland, one from New Jersey, one from Tennessee, and obviously the one from Germany. So um, I think we've done a great job there. When you think about, you know, you guys can watch Huddle and look at all those things. There's so many other things we're looking at. We're looking for you know, our future leaders uh, of 
this football team, but we're looking for football players. And, you know, they better have the academics they need, but we're looking for guys that love the game of football. And I think as you talk to a lot of these guys, and some will, some will say are an A plus as far as loving football. When I say a guy loves football, when I talk about them, you know, it's like on the extreme, um, and you need those guys, and everybody loves it at a different degree. But I think overall, these 19 guys love the game of football, and it's important to them. And I think, you know, you know, you can be a great athlete and a great player, but if you don't love it, you love something else. There's a lot of things to love in this world, but if you love something else better or you like what you get out of football, not the game of football, I think we've got problems there. So I really like, you know, our kids' love for the game. So in this class, we've got, you know, five state champions, Zach Carruthers, Alan Bryant, Jashir Whittington, uh, Davin Bruton, and Cam Lindsey. Uh, congrats to those. We had a couple that were a game away. Uh, of the 19, 14 of our, our team captains, uh, which I expect them to be in our Eagles, you know, just kind of build that and we'll find out who they are there. And overall, 3.0 in core GPA, which, you know, with the NCAA, you know, we average at 3.0, which I think is pretty strong. I'm not sure if I've given you that stat in the past, uh, but it's a pretty good one. So I'll start off with the offensive guys. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the first one to get five offensive linemen is, uh, is Adham Abu Reha. Um, Adham is uh, from Downington East High School. Uh, he's a tough dude. He's a wrestler. Um, you know, uh, big offensive lineman. You know, was on our campus several times. Uh, just a super, super kid. He's got. He's detailed. Um, he's focused on what he wants to do. Um, you know, I can't wait. I told him. I, you know, I told him this morning. I want to see some of his. I, I want to see people forfeit when he's wrestling in his senior year. I think that's how tough he is. I want to see that. And I've also got video on my phone. I don't know if I'll share it with you. He's. A, he's a. He's a big dude. There's not many big guys. I don't know how many, you know, lots. Can you do a cartwheel? No. This guy did a cartwheel in the hallway of his academics, you know, counselor's office there. So, um, really athletic. So, uh, we're at, happy to have Adam and his family. Giovanni Cooley, uh, Cathedral Prep up in Erie, played both ways for him uh, up there. Obviously, he's an offensive lineman, offensive tackle, um, you know, an all state guy that, again, is just a big, rangy guy. And, and um, you know, after we offered him, it didn't take long for him to say, I'm coming to Pittsburgh. I mean, came down with his mom and, and, and some other you know, family members as well, but um, he's, he's laid back and, and uh, again, like most, most offensive linemen, but he's all pit and we're excited to have him. Um, the third guy I talked about is Mortz, uh, Shmo, Shmozanzer. Uh, did I spell that, did I say that? Shmozanzer. Uh, he goes by the nickname of Shmo, so we'll just call him Shmo. I got that one down. Uh, Shmo is obviously from uh, North Cross High School down in Virginia. Again, from Germany, FaceTimed him from Germany at 144 this morning. I got the first uh, text message, Coach, I'm all in. It's official. Um, and then, he, you know, he was eating a salmon, you know, uh, salmon uh, lunch today. He was having a lunch uh, there in Germany. I think they're six hours behind, but he was having lunch today. It's a salmon special there in, in Germany, mom and dad on the phone. But uh, they are excited. Uh, he came over here in 10th grade because he loved football. And uh, he's done a great job down there in Virginia at that uh, private high school, uh, North Cross. Um, and the, the thing I love about this guy is he's a team guy. You know, he watches D-line with Coach Abbey. I mean, he comes off the ball. He can play on defense, too. He's an offensive lineman. He can play defense. And you know, we talked when he came up for a game with his family. Uh, Mom and Dad came for a game as well. Um, talked about how Coach Abbey on the punt team. He wants to be, you know, when he sees David Green out there on punt team, he wants to be on the punt team as well. So he's one of those guys that, uh, that you love. He wants to do everything. Fourth offensive lineman, Mason Lindsey from DeMatha Catholic. Um, again, great high school. Um, and uh, again, another athletic, long offensive tackle. Um, he got to DeMatha, like he got a lot of guys do, transferred in there. Um, and, uh, you know, it's been starting ever since he got there. Had a little injury as a junior, um, which I think hampered maybe he's recruited a little bit, but we saw through that. Um, he's a big athletic, he's tough, you know, he's mean. Uh, he's got a you know, real strong mom and dad there in the home. So. Um, we feel good about Mason. Um, the last offensive lineman is uh, Caleb Holmes, kid from Creekside High School, you know, home of B.J. Williams as well, and Rashad Battle. So a lot of familiarity down there. Great football, um, you know. And again, this is one of those guys that you, you sat with him and you're like, this dude loves football. And you hear about it all season. We're trying to get a hold of him. You know, we're allowed to talk to him, you know, on the phone and all that. But you can't ever get a hold of him because he's at practice. He's watching tape. He's with his team. He's always doing something for football. When you talk to him, it's all about football. Uh, he don't want to talk about anything else except football. So we appreciate that, um, you know, the, the, his love for the, the, you know, the sport. The other thing that, you know, hit me when I was on his home visit is, 
And I said, hey, what, you know, okay, football, I get it. What else do you, you love? He goes, coach, I love to go out and help other people. And I'm like, Celeste, I didn't text you that night. I was like, Celeste is going to love this guy. So Caleb Holmes, you may text him tonight and say, you know, I heard from Coach's presser. And like, that's the, one, first, that's the first thing he said. I'm like, this is the kind of guy that we want here in Pittsburgh uh, that's not just worried about himself, but he's worried about others. Quarterback Julian Duggar. Obviously, we took one um, from Penn Hills High School. You know, he's a mid-year guy. It, Mortz is a mid-year guy as well, if I didn't already tell you that. Uh, but Ju Julian is a mid-year quarterback uh, that we're really, really excited about. Um, you know, things happen for a reason. Um, you know, we, we you know, uh, kind of waited. You know, thought we had somebody. You know, didn't have somebody. All those things that happened in the recruiting. Um, but you know, we saw Julian in a seven-on-seven seven a year ago, coming out of his sophomore year. I guess coming out of his junior, no, out of his junior year, I guess. But saw him, you know, two years ago, and um, and he looked really good. But we were like, mm, we'd like to get better. And when he came out in summer camp here, seven on seven, Chris Peaky probably shot, this guy's on fire. This kid can throw the ball, um, he can run, he makes great decisions, he's smart. Um, and uh, we're excited to get a Pittsburgh guy, um, you, know, in, in, you know, in our quarterback room. So he's made some major improvements throughout his you know, season. And you know, I think that's some things you know, that don't happen in college football anymore is that, you know, those guys that develop in their senior years, sometimes you miss on them. And uh, you know, luckily, you know, we were not going to miss on Julian Duggar, uh, so we're, accept, uh, we're happy to have him and his family here in Pittsburgh. <coughs> Joel's goal, running back uh, from Central York High School. Um, again, outstanding football player. Um, you know, at one point we had two, but there's no question this was the guy. Uh, his dad will tell you, he'll tell you, and I'll tell you. Um, if we were going to lose one, you know, this is the one we did not want to lose. He's a 10, 800 meter guy. He's the all-time leading rusher. Um, in, in that school district there, he's got you know he's got that breakaway speed. You know he's talked ten you know ten eight, and he's always senior in high school. He's explosive, um, and uh, you know it's one of those guys if you give a crack, he's gonna he's gonna take more than than you block for him. And that's what we need is you know another one of those guys in that factor. And the last guy on offense is uh, Cameron Montero, kid from Brockton High School. I've recruited two other guys through my years. It's a tough high school up in Massachusetts, you know South Boston area. And uh, to get a mid-year wide out, uh, play quarterback a lot of your career. There's nothing better than having an athletic quarterback um, in your program that's smart enough to do that stuff. Uh, so he'll be he'll be a really smart receiver for us. He's athletic. He's he's uh, he's tough. And again, he can't wait to just focus on uh, the wide receiver position. Defensively, we got uh, we get 11 signees as I said earlier. Uh, five of them are on the defensive line. It starts there. First one is a guy that's been committed to us. He was very first commitment. Uh, Jashir Whittington um, from Imhotep Charter High School there in downtown Philly. Uh, again, this you know this is one of those guys that loves football as well. Um, always got a smile on his face. He's tough. He's physical. He led his team to a state championship. We wish he was mid year. Every time I see him, I was like, Are you sure you're not mid year? I uh, wish he was mid year. Um, and um, you know, again, just one of those guys that led his team to a championship. He's explosive. He causes havoc uh, inside. You know, whoever he plays against, and I know Coach Partridge can't wait to get his hands on all these guys. Uh, next one, Ty Uhas, Pittsburgh Central Catholic, local boy. Um, again, family's all pit. The one thing I'll tell you about Ty is, you know, when he first got his offer coming out of camp, it was like, Coach, I'm committed. Like he did, you know, some guys are going to go home, you know, take 24 hours when it's real early, but there was no question. Right now, this guy's a pit guy. He wants to be a pit, and, uh, and to me, that's important to me. There was no hesitation at all for a local guy. He's seen Pitt enough. He's been to every home game this season. And I told him when he committed, I said, you know, you got season tickets, you know? It's like I gave him something. Um, you know, every prospect gets three, you know, three tickets every home game. So he used those season tickets to his fullest. And, you know, I think he was in the locker room after every ball game, win or lose, Ty is with us and uh, we're, we're excited about having him. Next one is Francis Broom from uh, Thomas Worthington High School over in Columbus area, Westerville, Ohio area. Uh, get a mid-year defensive tackle. Uh, this is one of those guys in the last, uh, you know, last 48 hours, uh, maybe 72 hours. I don't know how long it's been. Um, I think it's publicized out there, you know, on Twitter that he was visiting Michigan State. But it's a guy that went down to the wire. We didn't know until sitting in the lobby here as a staff uh, that he was with us. You know, we had some ideas. But you talk about hour and 40 minute conversations with me. Then he'd go 150 with Coach Partridge, and then it was, you know, 60, you know, five minutes with with Coach Manlack. But uh, the three of us, you know really tag-teamed him for the last, you know, three days 
um, really, and, uh, and secured his commitment. I can't tell you how thankful I am to have him. I think he's a, uh, again, the mid-year is, is the key. We've got three mid-year D linemen coming in, um, but with you know some of the voids we have in there, uh, you know, being able to come in mid-year is critical. So we're excited to have him. He's strong. He sent me, you know, sent me a, about a week ago. You know, him benching 415 pounds in high school. I mean, you're going to need that coming in here. Um, but I appreciate his loyalty and staying with us. Uh, with, with all the temptations, as we know, there's a ton of temptations out there. Uh, he ignored all that noise and, and did it the right way and stayed with Pitt. The next guy, uh, Sincere Edwards, again, um, Kiva High School, home of Brandon Hill, um, an outstanding athlete. Uh, you know, some of our coaches, it was the first time they had uh, pineapple and chicken pizza. Okay, I've always heard of Hawaiian, but that's his favorite pizza. If you guys are trying to get him to do an extra interview, you know, you might have to ask him about, you know, you might have to get him a pizza. Uh, but uh, since here's a, you know, it says 265 pounds on, he's actually 241 pounds. He's a guy that can maybe play a little bit. He played some linebacker in high school. You know, I'd, I'd imagine at 240 he's going to start a defensive end. We'll see, you know, what he looks like. But he'll be here. Um, but um, you know, he does an outstanding job, and uh, we're, we're excited about where uh, Sincere will be in this program. And then uh, the last but not least on the D line, state champion, uh, mid-year defensive end. Uh, again, Zach Carruthers from. Uh, Shamanad Madonna High School, uh, prep school down in, uh, in Florida. Um, again, just an outstanding football player, defensive end, um, can do it all. And probably the best uh, the best um, compliment you can get, and I told him son on the phone today, I saved it for today, is you know, I'm at uh, Burton Catholic High School, who they beat early in the year. And you know, and I, I'd imagine, you know, you know, Shamanad has maybe 10, 10 guys signed today. And the coach is like, Coach, that guy you got out of there is the best football player on the team, the best player we saw all year. Um, so, uh, again, getting a you know, compliment like that from another you know, staff, uh, another team that you played is, is critical. So, uh, not only did they uh, win a state championship, they finished number two in the country, um, you know, I guess in the USA Today, as far as just you know, top teams in the country. Linebackers start off right, right, right at home here. Al Equipa, uh, linebacker Cam Lindsey. Um, again, a really athletic guy, plays in all three phases for them. Um, you know, when you watch his game, I, get, I had the opportunity to watch one live game, I believe, this year. I think it's the only game I had a chance to go to at New Heinz Field. Um, not at sure Heinz Field, it's their Heinz Field. Um, but, you know, football player, um, athlete, I think he can play all three positions. I think he's kind of like a Servassier Dennis. I think he's one of those guys that you can put it star, you can put it money, you can put it Mike. I think he could do it all. Um, and um, he, you know, he runs down on kickoffs and knocks people's heads off. You were watching him do that for four years. And um, you know, he plays downhill and aggressive like, uh, like we need our guys uh, to play here. The next guy, again, a guy that loves football from Red Bank Catholic High School down in South Jersey, Davin Bruton. Um, again, a 235 pound guy, I don't know, um, but just a big physical, again, loves the game, okay? Loves the game of football. Uh, parents own a restaurant, if you ever, you know, in that neck of the woods, that Kenny Pickett neck of the woods over in, in he called it Central Jersey. Um, when I recruited, recruit, recruited there for years, it was never a Central Jersey. It's either north or south, but I guess they created something in the last few years. Um, but a Central Jersey type guy, but they got a soul food restaurant, outstanding, highly recommend the catfish when you go to fried catfish. And for the first time ever, I had fried lobster at their restaurant. So um, that is a first. And, and again, I had some unbelievable meals throughout the deal, but that was. Um, that was, that was incredible, cooked by his dad as well. So, um, but loves the game of football, and um, you know, can't wait to get him in there. I think he can be a Mike. You know, probably you know, until we get him here, I think he can play well as well. Uh, but he's a bigger guy that's going to need to be at the, the Mike or the money position and, and uh, sick him to the quarterback. Uh, the last guy, again, a mid-year guy from Miami, Norland, uh, Jeremiah Marshall, um, a big physical guy. Um, you know, he was one one game, maybe a couple plays away from winning the state championship. I think everybody in the state thought they were going to win it. They didn't get it done. Um, and I know he was crushed. He played the entire season with a broken pinky, had surgery after the year. Um, so he's in a little finger cast now or whatever. Um, we had some pins put in there. But you talk about tough. Uh, he is a tough, physical guy that uh, I can't wait to watch come in here and, and practice this spring and, and see what he's all got. But um, he's, he's a detailed guy. And like I said, he's got great size. He's got instincts. He's got toughness. Moving into the back end, um, safety, you've got one safety in Allen Bryant. Um, I think I'll say Brad Allen from St. Thomas Aquinas High School. Again, 
when you look at some of these high schools, you know, you're talking Damascus, you're talking Red Bank Cup and Miami New Orleans, St. Thomas Aquinas, these are some of the top high schools in the country that we're pulling guys out of that love the game of football and been coached well. Um, you know, but Alan Bright, uh, again, big old safety, he's detailed. Um, and again, he's, he's laser focused on what he's doing. He's really smart. Uh, he's going to be one of those guys back there um, you know, for, for a few years here. We, we expect to make a lot of plays. He had three interceptions this season. And um, again, a state champion as well for his high school. Uh, so that's our safety for the you know, signing for the year. Um, and then we got two quarterbacks, uh, uh, Nigel Maynard, a kid from Stewart's Creek High School in Tennessee. You sit there and say, what are we doing down in Tennessee? I think it's our first player that we have from Tennessee. We almost had a quarterback a couple years ago. Um, but um, you know, Nigel is a really good player. He's got family in Youngstown. Long story short, his mother and my little sister Okay, and she's got a twin. We're in elementary school together. Okay, um, so it goes way back. That's not why we, you know, that's not why we got him. But you know, you find these connections as you're talking. Um, probably got to go back in St. Ed's uh, middle school, find out, find the picture. Okay, um, find out, you know, find out what they looked like back then. But uh, so he's got connections in, in Youngstown, and the connection was he came down to camp this summer. Hey, let's go to Pittsburgh's camp. Just out of the blue, he came to Pitt's camp. We loved him, we offered him, and we've kind of stayed on him since then. And, and now he's a Pitt Panther uh, as of 722 this morning. So we're excited, we're excited to have him. Um, and then the last uh, the last guy in defense is uh, Damian Pritchard, uh, another Youngstown, Ohio native, Boston Town Fitch, uh, another guy that was here in 7-on-7. Seven seven. He was already committed to us by the time he came to 7-on-7. Seven seven. But again, you know, impressed us even after you know being committed, of, you know, athletic guy. Who brings some of that Youngstown toughness down into Pittsburgh with the Pitt toughness? Um, but you know, a guy that uh, will excel at the corner position, like so many have here at Pitt. So that's what I got. So with that, that was too long. Um, I will open it up for questions. Yeah, just here for you, to see you guys about a year, a little over a year, eight months ago. How have you seen him grow as you guys have stayed in touch with him during that time? Mm. You know, I'd say the first thing he grew is he just got more maturity. On the outside, you know, football-wise, I think he's been a great football player. And, you know, I'm sure you know his high school coaches can tell you more about the day-to-day -day maturity that he's had. But the one thing I noticed is, at first, it was like, "Hey, I'm committed," and then I'm gonna go visit here. And, and you know, you know, that all went away in the last year. It might have been the first two months of maybe enjoying recruiting, but you know, Jashir just kind of grew up as far as just knowing what's important, where I belong, you know, what a commitment and loyalty really means. That's what I see, you know, from him. I'm sure we'll see a lot more improvement on the field, but uh, you know, he's, you know, he obviously got stronger and more physical. You know, when you talk about the athletic attributes, uh, but he's a, he's a, he's a really good football player. Okay, how many mid-year guys do you guys have right now? How many mid-years in this class? Yeah. Um, gosh, I think eight or nine. Let me look back here. Eight. Uh, nine. 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 Okay. So nine mid-years. Again, I'll, I'll I'll throw those those mid-years at you again here, just so you know who they are. You know, Moritz is, Julian is, Joel's is, Francis is, Sincere, Zach, Jeremiah, and Alan Bryant. Thank Good you. question. Pat, you spoke to the importance of, you know, finding some of these guys right in your backyard, but what is it specifically about some of the players you guys have brought in through the whip deal that is so important to you? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, if a guy leaves this area, sometimes they do. Sometimes we want them, sometimes we don't. The first thing I'll say is it's the quality of football in this area, okay, in the Whitfield, um, that's still there. And I think you know sometimes people think it's gone, it's it's down. You know the Rust Belt State, which we know, you know Northeast Ohio and Western Pennsylvania, state of Pennsylvania, you know are still in that category. But you know the quality of football that we have in the state is still high. The quality of coaching, and again thanking all those coaches for all the hard work they put in. But it's the coaching, the development, and the love of football, and obviously the love of Pittsburgh that brought all those guys here. So it just tells you that, you know, Pennsylvania is still playing a lot of really, really good football. You know, I go out to where Jewels is from. You know, you talk Whippeal, but you know, Harrisburg, you look at, you know, Kenny Johnson and what he did last year. I mean, you know, I, I didn't know there was any football out there, supposedly. That's what people, that's what other coaches around the country will say. You know, I've heard them talk about, like, hey, you know, you know this is other coaches in, in Power Five saying, yeah, there's not much, you know, not many football players in, in the state of Pennsylvania. Okay, well, I think we got seven pretty darn good ones. Uh, you mentioned uh, Cam Lee reminds you of Tavante. In what way? You know, he's he's really smart. He's athletic, and like I said, Tavante can play anything. 
you know, people say, you know, he's a Mike in the middle linebacker, but that he played everywhere for us. Um, and, you know, he was an outside linebacker playing inside. Uh, so we think he's got great speed. Uh, he's got great athleticism. We think he's got a great mind for the game. Um, and he's focused on what he wants to do. I mean, there's, you know, there's the focus part is, uh, is important. You guys obviously recruited Julian to play in a different offense, but do you think his skill set actually will be even better for this new offense? I do think it'll be better. Um, you know, Coach Bell is left-handed. You know, when he jumped up on the board, I'm like, hey, Julian's left-handed too. Um, you know, a lot of people don't like left-handed quarterbacks. I think that's maybe one of the reasons he was still waiting for us in the summer. Um, in fact, one of my first, I guess my second full-time job, I won't mention his name, um, but he called me last week. You know, we're talking about recruiting, and he said, he said, um, you know, just talking about different positions, what we want is an offensive line, and what kind of running back do we want? Quarterback, don't bring me a left-handed quarterback is, was the comment. I think there's a lot of great ones throughout the country right now, but I think, you know, that was maybe 30 years ago, 25 years ago, but it's like, no left-handed quarterback, wow. It's like, that makes it easy, I can go out there, if it's left-handed, I can just walk out of the school and go the other way. I'm not gonna bring quarterback coach a left-handed quarterback, but, you know, I don't think it matters which way that ball comes out. He's, he's talented, he's athletic, and again, he fit our offense, you know, Again, you talk about dual threat and drop back. I mean, you know, last season we were, you know, 75% 11 personnel and then the gun most of the time anyway. Uh, we dabbled in a lot more things that maybe, you know, uh, we didn't need to, but you know, probably our best personnel grouping is 11 personnel in the gun. So, you know, to me, he's a drop back guy. He's also a dual threat guy. He's got, the, you know, uh, capabilities of doing both. It's not like this athletic quarterback that we're just going to make all these quarterback runs up now because um, he's got a great arm. I don't want to put him in that box of he's a you know a dual threat. I think he's a drop back quarterback that's athletic enough to you know to get out of trouble. You know, use his feet, make plays with his feet. Um, but you know, he he can throw the ball. Um, he, he can pass the ball. He's got great touch, and uh, and he's really really intelligent. And uh, but he came on the visit just this past weekend because we didn't visit him in June. Um, first thing I said is draw your favorite play. The drawing he drew up. I've seen a lot of coaches around the country can't draw it as detailed and as and as, as as well as what he did. I'm like, whoa! And then you know, okay, tell me what you're reading here. And he went through the progression. I'm like, whoa! It was different. And uh, so we're, we're excited to have him. Do you envision Don for Montero making instant impacts with this new offense? You know, I think you know, you know, we want to play as many people as we can. You know, we're going to change the tempo up a little bit. We're not getting into philosophies and offense and what we're going to do. And, and I'm saving, you know, Coach Bell. I sent, just so you know, I sent Coach Bell home too. He had, in fact, he left about a half hour earlier and everybody else to take a flight home. It's his daughter, uh, Palmer's birthday today, her second birthday. So I was like, get out of here. He's gonna, I'm coming home tomorrow. I was like, no, you're gonna be home for your daughter's birthday. He got here on Tuesday. I offered him a job on Sunday. I'd never seen a guy get here so fast and on the road um, and, and, and get working. And, and he did a heck of a job for us in the four or five days. I got a ton of text messages. You know, new guys here, got some things going here. I mean, he's, he's a grinder that way, but um, I'm not sure where that question went, but I just. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I asked, I asked if, if Goff or Montero are guys that can immediately play that are immediately ready to play, or do you think those guys with this new offense might need a little more seasoning, so to speak? I think everybody on this list has a chance to come in and play. I'm not going to tell you someone can't. Um, I can tell you this, you know, whoever comes in mid-years you know, with the offense has got a chance to learn it right next to everybody else. It's not like everybody's got a year on them or two years or a spring under their belt. Um, even the guys coming in the fall are coming in, you know, I should say coming in the summer. Um, so they're coming in nine months or, you know, three months later, nine weeks later, whatever it may be. Um, and they're coming in, you know, to learn it and they're one semester behind. Um, so the learning curve won't be as great for any of these guys, but, you know, I'm never going to put a, Bar up saying you guys can't do it, you're freshmen, you know, as you know, I mean, we had at least eight guys play last year. I think um, a bunch of guys start at least five, you know, got, you know, four game plus as far as playing experience. So, um, you know, if any of these guys can play, uh, we're looking for, for difference makers in the backfield. We're going to go faster than what we have. You probably won't see a huddle out there much. So when you're going fast, you're going to use more guys in there. And, you know, is it six or seven plays fast? You know, run those guys, the skill guys out, and stick another six in there, and let's go. Um, so, you know, so I would say anybody on this list, and we'll find out this spring. How did you recruit a lot of these guys for a number of years? How did they respond to Kate? What was the reaction that you were getting? 
Um, you know, really good reaction. You know, um, you had people calling from outside saying we want to come, and we didn't have any spots. So you had other guys that were committed to other schools calling, asking, hey, you know, we want to be a part of it. So I think it spiked recruiting a little bit. You know, the freshness, newness of what we were going to do, and, and, uh, and again, I guess read, you know, read about what we got, and uh, so we'll talk about that later. Um, you mentioned that you took a FaceTime from Morris at 9:44 this morning. Not a FaceTime, no, no, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but when I heard a buzz, I rolled over and he just said, it's official. Oh, the text message. Yeah. I was wondering how much sleep you got in the last 24 hours. Well, I got sleep in the last 24 hours. You know, I'd say a week ago, I didn't get much sleep. But we talked about that at the end. But no, December was not an easy month for any coach. Uh, but it was especially hard on someone that was trying to do all this recruiting. And then it was, you know, in the, the wee, wee hours of the night or early, early morning trying to find it. You brought up Coach Bell. Um, can you take us through a little bit of that interview process and how it's a little bit of a departure for you in terms of this past offensive coordinator you hired? What about him impressed you so much that you said this is the guy? Yeah, again, I, I want to keep it on these guys, Amanda, to be honest with you. And, and you know, I'm going to answer that briefly because I'm not going to ignore your question because it's Christmas, so Merry Christmas. Okay. Um, but, um, you know, uh, again, you always got to change and you're moving with it. You know, we talk about evaluation of what we do, how we do it. Uh, we're spread anyway. And, and uh, you know, we're going to play good defense no matter what. And I wanted to play great offense. And I wanted, I wanted to get a guy that can score points, a guy that had an attitude that we're going to score and we're going to go and, and push our guys to be the best they can be and, and have fun doing it. I think part of it's having fun, and I think that's what we got. You one of those three, three whole seconds between snaps. We'll find out, Jerry. I don't know. Possibly every once in a while, maybe seven seconds. How about that? His, his little term is hit the gas, so we're going to hit the gas a little bit faster. Yeah, Chris. You, you have three linebackers in this class. You signed three last year. All those guys played last year. Do you feel like these two classes back to back are kind of rebuilding the linebacker room to some extent and kind of setting? Forward? Yeah, rebuilding. I mean, I think it, you know we've lost some good players. You think about some of the guys we've, you know, um, and that's no disrespect to our players. Don't misquote me. Um, we lost some good players through there, and, and again. Those three linebacks we got a year ago, and these three right here, you know, again, you're playing with young guys. Sabatier played young, so all these guys have a chance to play, and we're going to put them in there and let them go and teach them and coach them and, and mentor them through this process. But, uh, you know, we got young guys, you know, all over the place. We played with the young guys last year, so uh, I wouldn't call it, you know, rebuild, um, but you can use that term if you like. About Goff, you said that was the guy that you were going to lose when you didn't want to lose him. You mentioned explosive, explosiveness and breakaway stuff. What's the next level for him to achieve, and why was it that that was the one that, of all people, you did not want to get away? Well, you know, I think it comes down to speed. There's a lot of good backs that are a little bit slower, a little bit bigger, um, but this dude's explosive. And uh, you know, as a defensive guy, the one thing you don't want is have that guy that if you give him a crack, you know, a five-yard run turns into 55. That's what you don't want. You know, if you lose a big guy and you miss him for five, you gain seven eight or ten, you're okay. I mean, those guys aren't going to bother you as much. It might be physical, but you know, we're going to be physical too. Pat, you had a couple decommitments, but for the most part, I mean, this group stayed intact. Were you, were you surprised that it was able to stay this way after the season you guys had? Not really. I mean, I think they, you know, they get it. They understand. Um, you, know, you know, sometimes it's like that. I mean, you just, you know, it doesn't surprise me. I think it's relationships that we've built. I think it's still, you know, like I'll, you know, I'll go back to um, Francis Brew. I mean, I think, you know, sometimes as coaches, you walk out in the high schools and you see what's going on in the world and recruiting, and you kind of wonder, like, where are we going with this game? And then there's Francis Brew comes through, and, and, and it's not about maybe some of the exterior things that we don't even want to talk about today. It's about the relationships. And to me, Sometimes us as coaches, we feel like, man, do they really care? You know, do they really care about relationships? Or is that what they're not looking for? Um, and uh, but with Francis, it was about relationships and what he built with us. You know, the development he's going to get, and that's what we sell: is, is the people you're going to be around every day, um, the relationships you're going to have, and the opportunity at every position to get developed to be the best player you can be. And, uh, and again, so that's kind of it. Coaches at this level have to have kind of energy. How do you guys do it? The season ends last weekend in November, and you've probably been going six, seven days a week, four weeks now. Seven. You know how it is, Jerry? It's a great question. I knew you'd have a great question. Here's what it comes down to. 
And I, I know it comes down for me, and I can't speak for every coach, uh, but it comes down to passion. Like, what do you love to do? And that's why I said I love players that love the game of football. And, you know, in this game, if it was easy coaching, everybody would do it. There's a lot of coaches out there would like to be, or people would like to be coaches. But, you know, it, it's not easy. And you better, you better love the grind. You know what you're getting into when you get into this business. Our coaches know it. Sometimes they forget it. Um, but you're in this business to grind, and this is what we do. And, uh, you know, again, regardless if it's three and a half, four hours of sleep, like, you wake up the next day and do it again, and you do it because you love it. That's what we do. And, uh, and again, you know, there's, you know, that's, that's, that's the only reason I can get here. Because if you did love it, didn't have passion for it, you know, I could be sitting on a beach with a margarita right now with my feet up, relaxing. But that's going to come someday. <laughs> next question. Adam, have you found a, you mentioned how the rules change and how it's sped up sweet spot or a rhythm in dealing with recruits and the transfer portal and all and all of that stuff. How, how is that? It's been easier if you found some area where you can try to juggle all of it. Nothing's easier. It's, it gets harder by the day. I can tell you that. Um, you know, the rules, you know, everything that's going on out there, and I don't want to get into the, the weeds about all this stuff, but it gets harder every day. It's not easier. There's no loophole that we fell into and say, look at this. Let's try this. It just gets harder by the day. And, and I think there's no, you know, there's no group in this country that's more disappointed last week, you know, you know, hear about a possible can transfer as many times as you want. Like, what are we talking about? You know, is anybody going to get a degree anymore? And it's discouraging to think that in the game of college football, in student athletes, because I will still call them student athletes until I die, is that we're not talking about degrees. And if you transfer every year, you're never going to get your degree. And uh, that's why I got into coaching is to make sure kids get their degree and play football. But it's really number one to get your degree. And football is the avenue that's going to pay for you to get your degree. And it's the fun part of your job. And uh, so it's changing. Doesn't get any better. And, and uh, that's where we are. How much uh, NIL discussion is involved in your recruiting issue? What are you talking to kids? You know what? The great thing is I have no discussion. I had zero discussion on NIL. Okay? Because I let you know, uh, other people take care of that. I'm, I'm, I'm a football coach. I'm, I'm like Coach Tomlin. And, Coach Belichick, I'm going to coach football. I'm not talking contracts. And, um, and, uh, and our kids know that. Our, you know, recruits know that. Our sightings know that. Um, and uh, it was a factor. Even though you didn't discuss it personally with guys. Say it again? It, it was still a factor. Oh, it's a factor. Oh, yeah. It's a major factor. Is, is it's a major factor for some. But again, I want guys that want to play football and that love football. And if all you're talking about is that, we're moving on. We're going that direction. Because I'm not. Because you know what? We got to deal with it now. And we made maybe made that mistake in the past. If you're talking about it so much now, guess what? In a year, we're gonna be talking about it again. And then the next, you know, after spring ball, we we'll talk about it again. Don't really want to talk about it. You know, I don't want anybody else to have to talk to about it either. We want guys that want to play the game of football, learn, develop, and make generational wealth in three or four years when they, you know, end up in the NFL, like Brian O'Neill and Devontae Maddox and Tamar Hamlin, Dave Jackson, and. Aaron Donald, all those guys, you know, before us, you know, they played football and they've done well for themselves. And you know, sometimes I worry about, you know, where they're going to be if they aren't hungry like all those that have come before us. You mentioned how that's a big part of this process now. Um, is that just something that you go into a meeting knowing that you're going to have to address and, you know, hear what other schools are offering them? Yeah, um, you go into. The, I mean, every meeting you go in prepared, knowing what yes. to deal with. But you know that's normal. That's nothing. You know, like I gotta go take a refresher class. Yeah. Like, okay, he's gonna, you know, you know it's coming. Um, but you know what? It doesn't come all the time. That's a beautiful thing. So you get a feel. Like if that's like the first thing out of the mouth, what do they care about? Okay. And again, is that what you want? Um, I hope it's the last thing out of the mouth. And again, half this class, they didn't even come up. Maybe more. You know, without counting numbers. Did any of your Guys that came through the transfer portal sign, yeah. They have. This is high school day. Am I getting ahead of myself? You're getting ahead of yourself, but okay. yeah, we have got you know others on the horizon. Uh, we're trying to make this about these guys. It's their first go around. We're gonna have a special, as I told some of the transfers, we're gonna have a special deal when they get here. I'm putting them right here in front of you. You can you know you can get them right at the, the podium. You can eyeball them up. You can put them up against the wall. Put a height and weight chart here. Do it all, whatever you guys want to do. Um, we're going to be, you know, those guys are going to be available, special for them, you know, when that time comes, and we kind of wanted to do it that way.
Okay, DJ? I think it's outstanding. Do we have a couple other questions before we wrap up? Chris, I see your hand in the air. Sorry to bring it back to this, I just to clarify. You said you guys had nine mid-year recruits. Yeah. But I think I only took down eight names. Francis, Sincere. Why don't we do this? Why don't we go this way? I've got it right in front of me. Thank Coach, do you want me to handle this? Go ahead. Goff, Duggar, Montero, uh, Moritz, Sincere, Crothers, Marcelin, Nigel, and uh, Francis. You got that right? Should have a little slow for me. <laughs> Jerry had that down. Bigger still work. How about a couple more before we wrap up? Pro. Um, Anyone else? Pat, just looking at your your class, uh, the high ranked guys are once again on the defensive front. What's it just say about your defensive staff's ability to go get the big end prospects? You know what? They're all big end. I can care less about those stars. I have no idea. Never look, don't care to look, don't care where it's ranked. And we've had this discussion before, I can care less. You know, those stars that they got don't mean that the guys that don't have one star, two stars. Um, you know, I mentioned Joe Corner's parents last week. Uh, you know, we had two first rounders with two stars. I thought only one of them was, but we got first round guys, two stars. You know, that tailback that played next door here for a long time, maybe on Bell's two star guy, we beat Bowling Green on. So, what does it matter? I mean, I've seen enough of that, that and I've seen four stars that stick. So we can talk all we want about that. It doesn't matter. Final question, Jerry. Um, well, like I said, I got it. you mentioned your Maynard's mother and your sister went to elementary school together. Yeah. What, was that in Youngstown? Yeah. And what's your sister's name? Um, give me that. You're it's Regina. There. Regina. Is that, are you, is that all right if I mention her name? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I have to. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like detail. Detail. Details. You got it. St. Edward's still open. It is. It is. 